What's up folks? Today I wanted to talk about how the Tesla Autopilot works. It's a pretty cool system and it's quite daring in its approach. A lot of companies out there trying to solve self-driving use things like radar and LiDAR and vision combined. Tesla is taking an approach that is attempting to use just vision. Now, the way that that works is the same way that our minds work. We have a computer and we have vision and that is how we're able to drive a car without any car having an autopilot. So they're taking a pretty biological approach to solving this system, but it takes a tremendous amount of neural net training and compute power and all kinds of crazy stuff. And even I am a Tesla super nerd and I had to research how this stuff works. So I'm gonna share with you today all the stuff that I have learned and there is even further to learn. In the Wikipedia article about Tesla Autopilot, there are over 300 footnotes and it's not even that long of an article. That just tells you how complex this challenge is. So I'm gonna break it down for you real simple today. Now there are eight cameras in the Tesla Autopilot suite. There are two on each side, there's one here this looks forward to the side. There's one here, this looks backwards to the side. There are three in the front at different focal lengths. There's a wide one, there's a narrow one, and then there's a long range one that looks 800 feet down the road. Also, just behind the front bumper cover is a high power radar. That will be phased out, but it is currently being used. There are also 12 ultrasonic sensors spaced around the vehicle that help it see once something is within 25 feet of it what's going on. Now that's the sensor suite and all of that gets routed into a computer right behind your glove box called the Tesla self-driving computer. And this is a unique computer that is not even designed by anybody other than the engineers at Tesla. It has two identical processors on this board that do the same thing at the same time so that if one of them fails, you still have the safe backup of the other one working. And if they ever disagree, then it will revert to the driver. Now, all of this is how the car is working as it drives down the road. But for this even to be something that the car could consider doing, it has to have a lot of compute power to be able to do that. And the computer that Tesla uses to make the decisions about what the car should do while it's driving down the road is the size of a building. So let's talk about how that gets into that computer behind your glove box. First, we need to understand the concept of a neural net. A neural net is a computer program that is kind of a blank space. What happens is inputs come into it, say from a camera, a radar, or a ultrasonic sensor, and those inputs are kind of graded as they're, they're given things called weights. And the different weights that something has, the different importance that the neural net assigns to it. And over time, given tons of data going into the top of the neural net, it will have some good outcomes coming out the back of the neural net. So what the computer scientists are doing is telling the neural net, here's what we want you to do. We want you to not crash. We want you to stay between the lines. We want you to notice there's traffic cones. We want you to notice when somebody's swerving out of their lane, we want you to notice all kinds of dangerous things that can happen on the road, and here's how we would like you to respond to that. How you do that is up to you, computer. And so it's trained over the course of literally billions of simulated miles to get to kind of a rough estimate of where the neural net needs to be. It is then trained on an additional millions of miles of vehicles that come from people out driving their Teslas in the wild, that data comes to Tesla HQ and is fed into the system that trains the neural net. And once that's done, it co what comes out the other side of that is something that we could call an artificial intelligence. That artificial intelligence is small enough to actually be uploaded to the cloud and come into your car's computer overnight while it's plugged in at your house. And You'll get up in the morning, you'll turn your car on and it will say your car has been updated. You just know it's been a software update, but basically there's a new creature inside your computer that is making decisions about how your car behaves on the road. Now, that's the current state of how things are. Now, when you order a Tesla, you have the choice of getting regular autopilot or an additional package called full self-driving. The autopilot will take that neural net 
trained AI and it will tell it to keep you in between the lanes, it will tell you to avoid, it will tell the car how to avoid other vehicles and it will accelerate and it will brake. But it will not make navigation decisions, it will not stop at stop signs or, or traffic lights and it's pretty limited. It's basically an autopilot, just like in the sense of aviation. Now, the full self-driving takes it a step further. Right now, the full self-driving doesn't do a whole lot more. In the near future, it will, and we'll get to that. Right now, the full self-driving does a, a few somewhat useful things, like it will navigate on the interstate, it will take the interchanges, it will take the exits, but once you get on the on-ramp and once you get off the on-ramp, that's really the space that Navigate on Autopilot works. Once you're on the city streets, it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. But the future of full self-driving is currently in progress. There is a build of the software that goes into your Autopilot computer that's been released to about a thousand beta testers. And these beta testers are basically people that are testing the software for Tesla and reporting when it does something weird so that Tesla can put that into the neural net and train it about how to get a good outcome from that strange situation. Say for example, a garbage bag blowing across the road or a truck carrying another truck. That's some pretty weird stuff that can happen out there in the wild in tons, literally millions of other corner cases that the neural net is now learning to solve. Once it is proven in the simulation and by the beta testers that it is 99.999% safe, it will then be released to the rest of us who bought the Tesla full self-driving package. There will be a new AI that goes behind our glove box and it will be able to drive on city streets to the point where you just get in your vehicle and get this, you will tell your car, I want to go to XYZ address. You will then sit back and watch it do that with zero interventions. Now that's a pretty difficult problem to solve. That's what Tesla is working on right now. And it's so important to them, in fact, that they have designed an entirely new computer architecture called Dojo. Now Dojo is the word for a place that you go to train in the Japanese martial arts. And the Tesla engineers, being somewhat nerds, come up with cool names for their stuff. But Dojo will take tons of data from the cars that are out driving using autopilot and it will run that data through a new neural net, the new full self-driving neural net. And it will get so good that it will be far safer than a human. In fact, Tesla's autopilot right now is over four times safer than a normal human driving the car. Over millions of miles they have been able to test this and, the, and that graph is in fact on the Wikipedia page for Tesla Autopilot. Go look it up. It is currently far safer in today's Autopilot build, but once Dojo trains the new neural net and creates the new AI, which is then uploaded to your car, it's going to be far safer even than today's Autopilot. It's going to be mind-blowing. We will get to the point where in probably, I would say, within six to 18 months, where it will become obvious that Tesla has solved self-driving cars. That is one of the hardest problems in the world right now and one of the biggest focuses because so many people die in traffic accidents. So many people get injured in traffic accidents. So many pedestrians and cyclists get hurt by cars. It is a very important problem to solve. It is up there with cancer and aging and all kinds of terrible diseases. It is so important that we solve self-driving just to save the lives that are being lost to the convenience of transportation. So that's why I'm super excited about Tesla. They are an AI company. They are not an auto manufacturer. They are an AI company first and for foremost. And after that, they're energy and auto. So that's how Tesla Autopilot works. I'm gonna put some footage here after this video for you to watch where um, some kind of annoying things happen. Uh, for example, when Autopilot in its current build drives underneath a hanging light, like for either a fire station or a school zone, that's not even blinking, it will slow way down. 
I find that kind of annoying, but it's probably a safety thing. Also, it brakes very, very late sometimes when it's coming up to cars at a stoplight. So it's not really necessarily perfect right now. You have to be paying attention while autopilot full self-driving is working. I do have the self-driving option on here, but I've never felt that it has been in an unsafe situation. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of it and if there's something else that you would like me to review about how this vehicle works. I'm all yours. My name is Chris Rimble. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching.